so we're live now, brother. And we're done. Hello, people of the internet. <laughs> we don't even need to introduce you because your name's right in the title. How many freaking profiles do you have on Facebook, bro? Uh, no, never trust a man, anyone, that has more especially than... a woman, right. with more than one freaking Facebook profile. Ever heard of a burner phone? <laughs> yes, I have. I got two of like them. That <laughs> Come on. No, for real though, you need to have. You need to separate personal and, uh, and business. I think most professional promoters do. I mean, you get people wanting to ask you to hang out on a Friday night in the middle of like 70 bands asking you if they're booking you. It gets a little weird. It gets <laughs> yeah, so, so I, uh, yeah, I have the, the one is my business account. All right. Well, you, you I know. hope I'm friends with both of you anyway, so I don't want to be. What do you mean you won't ask me to your uh, personal account? No. I think so. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I tagged you in both of them. Yeah, that's why. At least both of them were tagged. Yeah, that works. All right, brother. So, yeah, thanks for coming in. I know you're really busy. you got a show tonight, even. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm I'm uh, co-sponsoring uh, a show put on by Matt Guarsi for the Light Years Fundraiser. So it's his show. They're putting it on. It's all their production. But uh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, helped a little bit with some of the, with a little bit of a push from the Facebook side of it and the social media. And uh, that's a free show too. Uh, or is that I, I, I think that's a cover charge. It's okay. not, I think it's a fundraiser. How are you finding people? You think they're they're cool paying covers now? Because I know, back in the day, well, I mean, it's you know, it's really difficult to get anyone to come out to see a show, anyways. But oh, they yeah. give you a hard time when they, you know, they no. get to the door and it's cover. Because to me, it's like, is it going to the band? No problem. Not really. Uh, I, I mean, I haven't had any issues going into the cover uh, cover charge model. I mean. Obviously, the first couple of years doing shows downtown on Queen Street, Niagara Falls, it was pretty tough. It's tough getting people to come out. And so, you know, we, we decided to keep it free for the first few years, all of our events, all our shows, make them as accessible as possible. And as the traction, you know, as it caught traction, as the momentum built on these events, uh, we started introducing a lot more paid events. And uh, honestly, there, there's been no resistance. It's always been justified by the caliber of shows that we've put on previously. It's about building the brand recognition and building the, you know, the, uh, you know, level of, of uh, uh, the caliber of events that you're able to put on and then saying, you know, yes, this does have a monetary value. Yes, I can, I can, I can understand why this could be worth 10 bucks or five bucks or whatever. You know, uh, it takes time like anything. It takes time. Taps been pretty good to you as far as giving you the venue to work it out. And yeah, Taps has been great. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. If I'd be able to, ha have been able to excel as quickly as I've been able to get uh, through everything without uh, help from Taps and Eric Martin specifically, who's been really awesome. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, give us a lowdown on what's going down this year. You got a few beautiful headliners. How many bands in total you got? And three days. It's this is the first time you're stretching it out, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's always been a one day festival. How many festival? How many years have you done it now? This is the fourth. Okay, and it's always been a one day. Yeah, it's always been a one day thing, and this is the fourth year. Uh, it, when I d did the press release, we were at 28 bands. As of this morning, we're at 30. Uh, so it's 10 bands a day, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, on the two stages, and they bounce back and forth. Uh, longer sets for the bands this year. All the bands that I booked over the last three years have always requested for longer sets. So rather than 30 minute sets, we're giving them all an hour each to perform. Uh, so you know, Road Rage is gonna love that. You know, they'll be able to just jam. Well, they do one song for an hour. Yeah, that's. They'll <laughs> <what laughs> be just warming up. You know, bands like Fat Moth and Road Rage and Line Fat Moth's gonna be I great. Mean, yeah. like, even Lice on the Hurricane uh, lining on the Friday. Another you know, great band they, that's they, blowing up. They love they love just riding the songs out and jamming it out. So give them the space to be able to do that, and I think the audience will appreciate that too. I see some uh, interesting familiar faces. I'm like, where am I? Where am I in the splash page? Oh, the splash page <laughs> website. Yeah. <laughs> It's I see CD <laughs> heading it up there. I see Mike, it's, fr yeah. the photographer there, and my brother. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's cool. That girl with the hula hoop that seems like she's at every show. Well, I mean, and that's, I guess, that's kind of like the, the point of the festival. You know, you go in, there's the splash pad with the video, and then there's My Southern Hurricane playing in the background. And yeah. it kind of gives you the vibe, like, you know, like this is like a, like a, a window in, the, in what will be happening in a month from now, like a... Minuscule on stage. Yeah, minuscule. Well, I mean, Laurel uh, killed it last year with uh, Majora. She was phenomenal. She, she, I see her play with the what? The, what boys did she play with? Sometimes Hammer Brothers. The Hammer Brothers. Wow. Oh yeah. Great Jeez. Her and Taylor Howley kill it. Uh, all yeah, I don't. I didn't. I'm not familiar with those guys. I don't think. But I saw them at uh, Grape and Wine maybe one year. I think that's the <laughs> only <laughs> blew show my they mind. Play. They, they play like maybe once or twice a year. Uh, and yeah, they're really it's solid. Always a phenomenal act. Uh, really so solid. 
yeah i mean it's um it's it's cool uh that you're able to see a lot of the familiar faces in that splash pad i mean that's a lot of people that you know that i know that are in the niagara community anybody that's in the in the local community is going to say hey that's that's carl david or hey that's yeah. uh, so i mean uh this is the, this is the family we've grown over the last four years you know and it's it, it's heartwarming to know that we know everybody on a first name basis it's kind of like uh, that cheers thing where you come in the room and everybody knows who you are so, so september 7th and 9th what's the friday saturday sunday right mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the weekend after Labor Sunday. Day, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to worry about. Is it r around the same time of year every time? It's usually in July. Oh, you moved it. Okay, so yes. you you moved it back a little bit. So this year we moved it to September. Uh, Why'd you move it? it? There's just a lot going on in the summertime in terms of you festivals. You find that the bands are playing; they're already booked with other festivals and touring yeah. and stuff like that. Or it's not even that. I mean, a lot of the bands, as soon as last year's festival was over, they wanted to sign on right away for the next year. So I mean, right. like they were okay it's just that um just locally speaking for what's happening here in the niagara region strategically speaking it made sense to move it to september where uh, the students are back in town uh the brock students the niagara college students you know mm. everybody's kind of settled in you know the kids are back in school so like to get away for a weekend kind of makes sense once everyone's already here in town uh niagara region kind of it's weird um, the tourist industry picks up in the summertime for Niagara Falls, but as a region, our busiest time is from September to uh, to May. So that's uh, that's the best time to kind of capitalize on that if you're not tied into the tourist district, which we're mm. not. It's a, it's a local one event. And how was how difficult was it to fill three days of music instead of one this time around? Oh, it was impossible to not make it more than the amount of bands that we had. Uh, we had a lot of submissions this year and uh it, it was really really difficult to kind of narrow it down to just 10 bands a day that's all i wanted to do just five bands per stage to kind of like logistically uh, to run it it would be a lot easier for the staff and everything so uh it was a lot of work it was a lot you know i had to go through all the submissions had to re listen to all the music and really good talent came in a lot of really good bands applied and uh, uh you know we picked the ones that we felt best represented how we wanted to move forward with the festival this year so i'm really happy with the lineup that we got yeah let's talk about the lineup who you got uh well we got my son the hurricane headlining on uh, uh the friday that's a friday uh, night yeah so that's kind of like the opening headliner the first night headliner yeah type the, of thing. the kickoff kind of a show okay with, uh, street pharmacy as direct support the matadors which will be one of the one of their first shows uh this year uh, they took a long break so this is their comeback show uh, uh we have revive the rose playing eli and the straw man the Kerouacs, pindles uh, wow. Pat, Pat all Friday, Mal all Friday, Jeez. Pat Maloney, uh, eclectic. So this, that's like that's a, a solid lineup right there, man. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's just gonna that's just the first <coughs> first night kickoff, um, and I th moving like it, it, I guess what I'm trying to say is that it, the way it was kind of laid out is the Friday was kind of supposed to be the. Uh, like the hype night, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, the, and like the rock and roll, all the rock and roll bands, you know, like the, like the cool, like uh, I, I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. This is a terrible description. I'm not always Beats. live. I'm not always live Lost on the spot. Lost words. Yeah. Write it down. Oh what date is it? Don't write any of this down. <laughs> Jeez. No, I guess what I'm trying to say is that Friday was supposed to be kind of like the rock and roll night. Uh, Saturday is like the funk night. And then uh, Sunday is the jam night, like the jam fusion kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's, generally the con the structure of the, the lineup so anyway so saturday uh is alan t connection is the headlining band and then sunday they got uh, road waves as the headlining band and so what time do you start there's 10 bands leading up to road waves alan t becomes it comes on when you say direct support is that who's on before yeah so pin uh so uh, the saturday where alan t connection would be the headliner the direct support after be flat five Oh, okay. And then Sunday, where Road Raves is the headliner. The oh, they're Sunday, okay. Yeah, the direct support for Road Raves on the Sunday is uh, Fat Moth. Fat Moth's a great band, Yeah, too. they're phenomenal jam band. So uh, I, I, d I don't have the like all of the bands memorized off the top of my head, but I could probably go through them if you wanted me to. Yeah, yeah, no, hit them. Yeah, uh, uh, so people know who there's. Sure. Um, so on, on, so I, I went through Friday already. On the Saturday, it's uh, LMT Connection, Flat Five, Blind Mule, uh, Phil Bosley, uh, John Carlo Feltrin Band, Old Child, Foxy Lion Bears, uh, Lindsey Meisner, uh, and then on uh, 
just sort of, and the CAC himself. And then on the Sunday, yeah, the CAC's he, the CAC's back. He's CAC's been kind of off for a while. He's eh? been off for a while, and he's he's back this year. Love uh, the CAC. He performed last year. Put on a great set. Yeah, uh, his sets are killer. Yeah, always, he, man. People loved it. He like hyped up the whole place. It was awesome. So, of course, you know, I'd love to have you back this year. And uh, do not uh, like if he doesn't get a reaction from a crowd, he he's he'll let you know. <laughs> he'll let me know. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, not you. He'll let the oh, he'll he'll let, let the, the people there know. know. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he needs to, he needs to get a reaction. I, I think he, let he our always sound does. Guy know last year a couple of things too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was yeah. who's doing sound? Uh, it was actually Jordan. I was doing sound last year. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're not actually doing it inside this year. Uh, we're just going to be focusing just on the outside because, okay. like I said, it is ticketed. So we're going to keep it all contained just on the outside uh, mm -hmm. area. And uh, there are going to be different programs happen happening inside, but they're going to be separate. Like Rick Rose might have a recital happening on a Friday. Jeff Vaughn might have a recital happening uh, on a Saturday. Uh, but that's going to be independently run uh, by those groups. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So and then the Sunday lineup. So Road Waves, right, as the headliner. Uh, the direct support was Fat Moth. Uh, then we have Mustache Hat, uh, Limestone Chorus. Wow, um, you're solid. I didn't go through them all, but that's a so that's. Yeah. I know, G's uh, cranked about Mustache Hat all the time. Oh yeah, he's gonna sit in on their set. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Um, Wax Mannequin. Uh, there was another one. Uh, Ashley Standish is playing as well. I, I got to mention Ashley Standish is uh, performing uh, okay. inside, which is going to be really good. Uh, yeah, and uh, there's a couple more uh, that I, Phantom 309 just joined the lineup. Uh, so solid. I think I mentioned about 27 out of 30. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well done. You didn't even need a cheat sheet for yeah, it. I didn't need a cheat sheet. I didn't bring one. But and so this is your first time you're going ticketed as well? Yeah. And so I'm hoping that's going to, help ease things a little bit for you you're trying to make a living off this you don't have a real job do you uh well i mean like this is this is uh where my passion is at and you know it would be mm -hmm. nice for me it's not so much making a living off this one time one off once a year event it's right. more about making the event sustainable uh so you know in lieu of government grants this year you know we, we've received government grants the last two years to you know host the festival okay and in lieu of that this year uh we want to charge admission in order to just see if the festival can stand up on its own two legs uh in its fourth year of operations because if that's the case and it can then every single year moving forward we can know that you know this festival has longevity and is sustainable the grant program that the city put forward works uh, and we, they can use us as a testament to you know the success of the grant program. So it's all tied into like a bigger, uh, a bigger picture uh, as to why we're we're going ticket it this year. Uh, I'm pretty confident it'll do great. Um, and you know, for me on a personal note, this is this is fun for me. Uh, I, I work uh, at TAFs. Uh, that's oh, where right, I, okay. that's where mm -hmm. I make my living. Right. And uh, you know, I have plans to go back to school and yada yada for a bunch of other personal things, but. <laughs> Uh, you know, for me, doing a festival every year is is uh, is fun. You know, it's one of my dream. I want to do this as long as long as I'm alive, I guess. You know, as long as I'm still kicking around, there'll definitely be another livestock. It might not always happen every year, but there'll always be another livestock. Well, if we're gonna expect that it's happening every year, especially I, once you go three days. I was gonna man, say, I'm gonna <laughs> spoil us for that. I don't, I don't see it not ever happening every year. Yeah, what are have you studied some of the pitfalls of the other? Because we've had some really cool <clears throat> festivals that kind of just went away. Have you studied kind of what yeah. not to do and yeah. what to stay Absolutely. away from? I mean, the scene was an unbelievable music yep. festival that we yep. had. And do you see maybe blowing up into that, or are you going to keep it just contained enough to make it? I don't know. I don't think it'll ever explode to be like a scene fest. I know there's a lot of pressure from media and whatnot to you know it's the next scene, blah blah. And it, it, oh, it, really? And it, it, it has, you know, it has some traction, but uh, I just don't think I would ever want it to be that that type of festival. I think for me, if it blows up in a park where a lot of people show up and camp and stay the, the night, you know, as like that a, could as be like cool, a right? destination point retreat. Mm. That to me is more so the goal of the festival than, you know, like a street wide multi day, multi venue music festival, which scene was and which was great. And I mm -hmm. took a lot of inspiration from that. But I have answering your first question i have uh met with different organizers of different festivals scene festival uh you know um uh, cumberland music festival uh and you know pick the 
friends with these people and discuss their festival and my festival and you know learn learn what worked and what didn't work and uh you know I, I mean long story short is just don't go over your budget <laughs> i don't know what else to say it's you know it's easy to you know try to go really big and sometimes you have to take those risks where you're booking a really big headliner and whatnot but you know you need to really be aware of uh, what the return is on those big risks and uh like anything it's business and like any business it's gambling and you know it's calculated risks but sometimes it doesn't win it's not in your favor so uh that's all i mean scene ran for 20 years and uh it was an awesome festival so mm. if there's anything to take away from it is that uh if you do something for long enough it'll catch on yeah how many bands are niagara bands or get some connection to niagara uh of, of the 30 band lineup i would have to say i think 27 oh geez 27 oh. of them are wow. niagara bands. so a, a large majority of them yeah the, uh, i think matadors must no mustache. less than 27 uh, probably 25 i apologize uh but mustache hat clap five blind mule matadors and rocks american uh, those are the five bands from out of town all the oh. other bands are in town wow mm -hmm. johnny henderson just uh, screamed you out and called you out on air. Hi, Johnny. We get a few people watching. So. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Barn, yeah. Hi, Mike. He says, "Hey, guys. So, uh, yeah. So, talk to me about some. Uh, are you playing this year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This will be the first year where I play with a band. I'm very excited. Who are you playing with? <laughs> uh, I, like, I don't have like not all the members. Are you don't. Want, <laughs> you don't want to jinx it. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everyone shows up." Who uh, are you cranked about? Like who are you really like jazzed about? Like yeah. Uh, well, I mean, really well, I like I mean with the the regulars, obviously, right. but they're an up and coming. Somebody that's going to surprise you because yeah. th that's the best part about festivals like this is you're like you're sitting there. You're you're supposed to leave three hours ago, right? And you're like, it, uh, usually for me because I'm going to come back. Yeah. You know, I go early and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go grab something to eat. I'll be right back, and then mm -hmm. I end up, who's this? You know, Eli and the Straw Man or somebody. You know that I know the name of that I haven't seen, and just it clicks, and then you're stuck there. I think the, I mean, aside from the obvious, like all the bands are awesome, but mm -hmm. I think the ones that I'm most jazzed about is the ones that I haven't seen before live. That's what I mean. Yeah, I've never seen My Summer Hurricane live. No. Uh, so to and I've been wanting to book them for a long period of time. So to be able to book them, and and watch the performance live at at, uh, at my event, I think. That's going to be a really exciting moment for myself. So I'm, I'm, awesome. I'm really looking forward. To I that. I can feel you there. Yeah, I'm hyped on that one. Yeah, I, because I really they're hitting it now. They're hitting it now. They're just a great band. They're just, oh, they're just yeah. a really good, good. Uh, Never band. seen a band that has that much fun on stage. And then Jacobs, energy. Jacobs, just Jacob's the energy, charisma, you know, the like band, he just bleeds it. And they're tight. Uh, oh yeah. And uh, I'm also really excited for LMT Connection because I mean those guys are just legends. Uh, they are without a doubt legends and. Uh, to to be able to have them perform at this festival is a huge honor. So that's something mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to as well. How about the young up and comers? Some of uh, you're still right, as far as the young up and comers, Eileen's. Well, not even young, but maybe new just or just people that haven't yeah. performed at the festival before. Pat Maloney is somebody I've been uh, really looking forward to working with for a long period of time. Uh, uh, we've been exchanging emails back and forth for at least like four or five months now, talking about like the right date to book. Uh, so it, you know, ended up falling that the first booking happened to be livestock. So I'm. I'm really excited about that. Uh, Lindsay Meisner is another one that uh, she's new to the uh, Niagara scene, but not new to the uh, music scene in general. She's been booking shows and doing a lot of different things. She's actually helping out this year with um, uh, the Caramel Fine Arts Festival. Okay. Uh, so she's on the lineup as well. Uh, John Carlo Feltrin. Uh, when I was in grade 12, uh, I was in the high school choir and we had auditions in, in the grade 12 year. And I just remember John Carlo in grade nine, you know, sitting in the chair, they're getting all nervous, you know, hands, palms all sweaty. And, you know, you just talk to him, you know, it's going to be just fine. It's going to be great. He gets up there, kills it, becomes a superstar, you know. Uh, and the next four years after that, you know, like he was a prize musician. And, and here we are 10 years later. And he's got this fantastic group called John Carlo Feltrin and the Scarfones. And, uh, you know they're performing at livestock so like that like full circle effect uh in life oh, awesome. kind of you know makes you feel good and uh i'm really excited to have them as well because this is their first festival experience so. awesome how about outside the festival who you who you keen on that's been playing at the bar or anything like that i mean I, I've s these um 
kids, I shouldn't call them, Jen. Have you right. seen Jen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable for a three piece. Uh, they fill, yeah. Nicole, that's her name, yeah. Nicole, Joel, and yeah. Ivan, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Young kids, but bit, just big fat music. There, there's somebody that I'm pretty turned on about, but to, who, who else have you seen up and coming that you're excited about? You want to give some air time to? Uh, yeah, Laurel, I mean, I know we talked about this uh, before, but Laurel is doing a lot of solo work. But you're talking about more up and coming. Uh, it's. I don't, uh, the list is long though, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the amount of musicians that are coming out right now and, and, and producing bands is a lot quicker than I've been able to keep up with, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially uh, out of Rick Rose's school. Uh, in, uh, even as we speak right now, there's a show happening at Taps uh, with Light Years. Uh, and there's a series of bands opening for them that are all local bands that are, you know, a young younger generation. Uh, so. Uh, it's uh, if I'm going to be honest for a minute, it is hard for me to keep up with. Uh, mm. uh, I feel like as I get older, I'm kind of stuck in this, uh, you know, m- you know, the, the bands that I've been working with for a long period of time. Yeah. Uh, but I do try to keep uh, an open eye for uh, newer musicians and some of the ones that I've been working with recently through Market Niagara, the farmers market that I've been doing every Sunday at Taps. Uh, Gavin, uh, I believe his last name is Gavin Trimo. Uh, phenomenal musician. Uh, he's I think he's only 22 years old. Uh, he's he's starting to get his feet wet out there. Jessica Wilson is uh, uh, an, another really good one. Uh, Vanessa uh, Re- Reggianti, uh, she's another really great one. Charles J. Hunk. Uh, I'm just Hunk. <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm just naming off some of the ones that awesome. that I know that are doing uh, pushing their uh, solo work right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, kind of making a splash. In, in the scene, uh, Valerie Borghese, that's another one. Uh, Valerie's killing it right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, she's another uh, young one. I think she's also only 21 or 22. Um, but she's trying to push her solo uh, career right now. And uh, phenomenal. Uh, she's. I think she's also, if I'm not mistaken, I think she's playing Sunday, September 2nd at Taps, Taps for the On the Outdoor stage. So like the, the week right before Livestock. Okay. Uh, so there, that's a shout out that I'd like to give to Valerie to for for her um and uh there there's one other uh gentleman and uh, i can't remember his name right now but it'll definitely come to me in a couple minutes i'm gonna okay I'm gonna, it's i'm gonna blurt it out while we're talking uh, about putting you on else. the spot that's uh well that's what i do no it's okay yeah that. i'm ready Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> unscripted everybody what's going uh what are you doing differently this year that obviously the three days is different but have you got anything in between now you're staggering <coughs> the stage is correct, so you go inside, outside type of thing, or big stage, small stage, or no, no inside this year, just out. Uh, just oh, outs- I thought you said Ashley was playing. Or Ashley's playing inside, uh, but that's to close off the night. Oh, so it's going to be um, so all day long. It's going to be the two stages outside. Oh, okay, so you're outside, so you get mm-hmm. two stages outside. Did, right. did you always have the two? Oh yeah, of yep. course you did. Yep. yep. So then it was almost like nonstop music. You're setting up on one. Exactly. You get going on the other no one. Yeah, time. yeah, no I don't remember time. now. There it is. Yeah, I don't know so why my memory so No, bad. it's okay. It's a, it, it just bounces back and forth from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. every day. Uh, and then, you know, the bands can play it up until midnight if they choose to. We have a permit for them to play until midnight. And then uh, as soon as midnight rolls around, the music continues inside. So you can get a permit to go after 11? Oh, yeah. We have oh, a permit nice. to go to midnight downtown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every year we go to midnight. Uh, but well, you don't have a whole lot of residential component down there. Well, yeah, yeah you yeah, do. You yeah, do. You're no, a couple streets behind. There's like sure. an apartment building, like Sabino, <laughs> right next door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of res- but they don't mind. They, you know, I don't know. If it's just, it's because it's a BIA uh, or because of the BIA and because it's a district. It's you know, it's they're mandated to promote the district events or part of it. So it's like, if you live within the area, it's kind of you, you buy into the, you know, the real estate. Uh, I wouldn't say rules, but like the rules of conduct of the area kind of thing, mm. which is, you know, there, there are a lot of concerts that happen around there. Uh, but so we, we, can, we can rock them up until midnight and then the music continues inside after that. Uh, like the first day it's with Eclectic, the second day is with the Tack, and then the third day is with Ashley Standish. So Ashley will play a set and then after Ashley's set, Phantom 3 and I will close up the night. Kickity Cack's so closing? Kickity Cack's closing. So you know it's going to be, <laughs> you know it's going to be 
just off the it'll, well, it'll be nuts because well, yeah. you'll be cranked Every, well everybody will be cranked and the thing is it's, <laughs> it's, it'll be it'll be the lmt cag, connection ca- the cack is a special kind of crank but like just follow me the cag. it'll be lmt connection for like an hour and a half and like everyone's gonna be having a great time yeah and whatever, you know g- dancing grooving grooving and then they're gonna stop they're gonna stop before midnight but people aren't gonna be ready to stop because it's only midnight and they're gonna want to keep going so they're gonna move inside like a fraction where they're gonna find it kickity cack <laughs> Right behind the microphone, ready to go, and then he's gonna be rocking for at least an hour. It's gonna be great. I hope. Awesome. Anyway. So, so three full days this year. That's uh, that's a huge step. Are you finding any more? Uh, that's what I said when you walked in. Look at you, you look cool, cool as a cucumber. You think you'd be pulling your hair out, going through all this kind of stuff, but no, no. Kind of got to run it. How many have volunteers are you getting out? None. <laughs> no, no volunteers this year. It's just run by staff. It's it's just easier that way for myself to. It's it's run like a family. Like there's there's only um, I think there's only eight of us, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, everyone has done this you know before with with myself. You know like they're all people who've been here uh, running livestock with me for the last three years, and they know what to do. They know how to run it, and you know we just kind of every year being able to like cut down the amount of volunteers. It just makes it easier for coordination. So this year there's just no no volunteers, just eight eight people. Uh, got the artist relations person the two stage managers the, the four uh production managers uh door staff two security and myself hmm. how many submissions you get this year 342 <laughs> <laughs> we get a filthy deep talent pool in ag yeah. right and most yeah. like i don't know i was surprised by it <laughs> but you know guys that you are around and that are in the business of music mm-hmm. that really understand the economics of it yeah. would often often tell me, you know, we've got sick, deep talent in Niagara and it's like nowhere else in the world. Yeah. I was like, I get it now because I've had some exposure to some of the, some of the great ones. Mm-hmm. And then there's way more of them out there that I haven't heard probably, but 342 submissions is a pretty good indication. You get some, yeah, I mean, wildly deep talent. At, l- at least half of them were from the Niagara region at least. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of submissions from Toronto and Hamilton as well. But uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's the amount of talent I- in the region is the reason why we do this in the first place. You know, it, there wouldn't be a reason to put on a music festival if there wasn't a you know a foundation of great talent in the region to work with. Uh, and you know it's the fire that keeps it going or the fuel that keeps the fire going rather uh, is all, you know all, all the bands that have continued to promote the festival promote their music you know work on their own craft and uh, you know keep chipping away at this thing that we call the music scene because we're working right at it together uh, it's, it's huge and I, I don't I don't necessarily know why Niagara is the, the way it is why we have so much talent there's a lot of factors uh, but it is the fact it, mm-hmm. it, it it really is a great hotbed for talent and um and i think it'll be like that for for years and years to come so what's the best way to get a hold of you and g- grab tickets are you just are you obviously the majority of people are just going to get tickets at the door you think or yeah weekend y- passes you can buy in advance is there any you know economic is, uh, incentive to go and buy buy your stuff tickets? yeah um you can get your advance tickets uh, on the website at www.livestockniagara.com. Yep. Uh, the economic ad- advantage uh, would be that, I mean, the, pr- the pricing is the same. The advantage is that, you know, you have a guaranteed ticket to, in case the event might sell out. Uh, then you have the ticket in hand to, you know, make sure you get in. Um, the tickets will also be sold at, at the door. Uh, and you can buy them ahead of time, starting next week at Taft's Brewery, as well. Uh, so the the main ticket uh, distribution center is Taps, and the online medium would be the website. And how are you working the submissions? Because right after the show, you're gonna have submissions sent to you, no? Uh, <laughs> for I the next year. <laughs> oh, for next year, well, I took down the link for submissions. Oh, Although you? some people still somehow find the hyperlink. Yeah, and 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 I still and get still submissions get even after I've I've taken down, which is I mean the, I, I'm actually like, those are the kind of bands I'm more likely to book if anything. If somebody's tenacious enough to actually send their music, somehow find the link, follow me up, follow up with an email, give me a call, like you know what I mean, like the, that's, I respect that uh, sort of tenacious attitude. So yeah, uh, I I I I don't know. I hope nobody, 
emails me right now for next year because I'm certainly not ready to start planning next year just yet. How about streaming it? We talked about this a little bit. Streaming? Like, I don't yeah. you think that's the future because, like, I, you know, I told you this on the phone a couple of weeks ago when we talked, and, and uh, I appreciate you. I know you're busy now, so mm-hmm. thanks for taking my call and, and coming out today. But, like, it's almost like in, in the more on Sunday morning, if I get up and I don't feel like going to church, because I like my church. Like it's it's not like oh I gotta go to church. <laughs> I got I got like I call it rock and roll pretty church. So I kind I like going and plus I'm really involved in production, right? I do video directing yeah. and stuff like that. Sometimes camera and, and whatever. So right. if I get up and I'm not feeling it, I'll watch it right. online on my phone, right? Like I don't need to be on the computer. I just watch it on my phone sitting on the couch, and then I find most times, a lot of the times, sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like I'll. I'll go jump in the shower and get down there because it's so good. I'm watching. I'm like, yeah. and I always think that that kind of hook is is probably there. It's got to yeah. be the way of the future, yeah. dude. If I don't want to come, my son the hurricane goes on at ten o'clock at night. By the time you know you you ran, I remember like clockwork. Oh, like yeah. there was yeah, no yeah, late because yeah. no, no. usually they say ten. It's quarter to eleven before they take the stage. They want you to drink longer or whatever, and then they yeah. play late. <laughs> but if I I don't care what it looks like. Mm-hmm. I just want to, I want good sound. Right. So if I'm sitting at home and I want to pay the ten bucks, like whatever the gate is, mm-hmm. then I'll, like, what's the difference? I'll stay home and get you still get my money. Oh, like a like a subscription fee for. Well, yeah, no, you just pay it. You just pay it. Like if you want to stay home and watch it, you pay the gate fee. I don't know. I can't. I, I you know I get how it's not popular for the big touring bands that are doing. 300 shows all over the world it's mm-hmm. the same show every time so I and i know that you probably don't want to stream the whole thing but i think the value in that would be more so towards really big acts you know what i mean like hmm. if you have an acdc playing at the amphitheater and I, I know what you're saying they do regurgitate a lot of their you know sets hmm. but uh somebody like that where you know people can't necessarily afford the three four hundred dollar ticket price or the thousand dollar front row seats you know, you can have a front row seat experience for, you know, your twenty, thirty dollar monthly subscription fees for this. Oh, live stream I see. Or yeah. Or so it, that would play out really well for something like that. But for a smaller scale event, live streaming is because w- what you're trying to create is an experience. And you're tr- it's fair enough. It, the, the concert experience, the festival experience isn't as much the, in the music as it is in the atmosphere and the people that are there. It's it's symbiotic. So. Uh, you want as many people there as possible but where you can use live streaming and where it's a great tool is to uh, uh, you know give people a sample of what's happening give them a window into the festival you know here's the first five minutes of the set Uh, you know if you like what you see you know come on down Mm -hmm. come on down to the show here's the address here's where it's at and everyone's partying and uh, historically for me anyways I've tried that uh, I've tried that in, in, uh, in other events, and it's always worked really well. You know, you're just popping up the phone, just taking a little, you know, giving people a little preview of what's going on. And within an hour and a half or so, you start seeing a lot more faces show up and asking, you know, what, you know, what made you come out? Oh, well, I saw your live feed, and I, I figured I'd, I'd, I'd stop by. But had, had I kept it running the whole night, I think, like you said, I think people might be more inclined to just stay at home and, you know, mm. be like, I'll just, you know, crack a beer and just chill out on my couch so there there's pros and cons yeah absolutely so i mean that's 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 the way i look at it's my take on that and i I think for this year definitely yeah i definitely want to tap into that live streaming thing like we were talking about Mm -hmm. where you know when my son the uh, the hurricane goes on even when the matadors goes on uh, you know the the bust out the the hd fish eye lens cameras i have in the corners there and just kind of like click them on so it'll be good well i give you credit rafik it's uh i know what it's like to have a passion that uh it's tough to monetize. Mm-hmm. Almost never can you monetize it. They always yeah. say, "Well, if you love what you do, you don't need to get paid." Well, yeah, I do. Yeah. Man's got to eat, Man's you know. Eat, like, yeah. come on. So, I, I you know, I, uh, I give you props for taking the risk and uh, for putting yourself out there because you know, no risk, no reward, and you know, I don't think you're. Well, it'd be nice if you did really well off it economically, but that's usually never the case. You yeah. know, as it gets bigger, you got more costs too, right? right. And then. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, it just at a you know uh, gratitude, you you want the bands to do well too. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm sure when you started out, there wasn't a whole lot of gravy for the bands to you know yeah, you know spike them. Yeah, yeah, a lot of guys were playing probably just for the loyalty or just no. You know. Everyone's always been paid. Yeah, I've never not paid anybody. Yeah, that's I'm very against not paying 
acquisitions. How do you, how did you afford to pay them with no gate? Uh, the first three years, uh, the first year, partially through the venue, uh, it's 50% through the venue, 50% out of my pocket. Oh, okay. So this is all, that's what I'm saying, this is all part of a bigger picture. It's uh, right. uh, internal contributions. I mean, the second year is and split you got three years. I got money, uh, venue money, my own money. As the years progressed, uh, it's been costing me personally less and less. But uh, like last year, it actually didn't cost me anything at all. We broke even, mm. but broke even with a grant. Right. So in lieu of a grant, we're trying to make up that difference in that money uh, through ticket sales. And by spreading out throughout three days, it'll uh, give people who aren't able to make the one day an opportunity to come uh, another day. And I think that'll offset the... Uh, the difference so uh, you know it's it's always been it's never been a struggle to pay the musicians but you're right in the first uh in the first year we've been success like every single year we've been able to pay musicians more and more which has been uh the goal of the festival and mm -hmm. i think if there's one thing that i'm really proud of this one thing i can take away from this uh event or this festival this initiative whatever you want to call it is the fact that you know we set a standard of what we want to pay musicians eventually we know we didn't have the resources to do it right away uh, but we made a mandate that nobody shall play for free and that we will try every single year to increase the rate for musicians till we th hit the mark. Uh, I'm not at that mark yet, uh, but I'm really close. Good. Uh, so it, it makes me happy to know that, you know, we're getting there. Good. Yeah. Who else you got coming up uh, at the bar or any any other events that you're putting yeah, yeah. You got uh, any, any stuff? going on before I, I probably shouldn't I probably shouldn't promote the Matadors before the Matadors is the <laughs> festival but I, I do have them booked uh, again for this year for later on this year I won't drop a date just yet for okay. that uh, and one that I can drop a date for uh, Friday November 16th Jesse uh, Roper is coming back into Niagara with his full band phenomenal phenomenal musician if you hadn't had a chance to ch check out Jesse you're missing out that's how I'm gonna say like you're yeah. you're totally missing out because this guy is one hell of an act Friday, November 16th. Don't forget that either. Cool. Yeah. Brother, I really appreciate your time. I know you're busy. Thanks, thanks for coming so in. Much. And uh, and thanks for, again, I, g I give you props. And, uh, you know, it's one of my passions as well. Maybe uh, you can flip me some of those artists. I, I'm doing yeah. all right for August 25th. You know, doing kind of the same thing. Yeah. Uh, band on an hour. Mm -hmm. Band an hour for, you know. Well, last time we did it, we started at 10 in the morning, went till 11 o'clock at night. It was like, wow. Yeah. Like I was gassed. And then I did a talk show for... Uh, two hours in between or three hours in between so are you doing it here no sessions on the river again it's so easy chris yeah, yeah, has got yeah. everything yeah, set the up same there same. and whatever yeah. so we're doing august 25th so a lot of the big bands like the pindles mm. and the you know they're all not going to play at sessions even though it's more of a i think that kind of lends itself nicer to the streaming you know it's great to see it there obviously the sound is great but he's got good yeah. He's got great facility. It's he not does. like, you know, it's on your camera phone, yeah. you know, yeah. type of thing. So he does, yeah. uh, maybe you have to toss me some of those bands sure, that, uh, yeah. that uh, didn't pan out for you. And maybe they want to play for, uh, for What's the, the date again? August 25th, Saturday. We're nice. going 2 yeah. p.m. Yeah. So we got room for maybe 10, 10 11 bands, uh, plus yeah. the lounge. Yeah. And then that's uh, we're going to stream the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I love that place too because then the whoever's there, mm -hmm. if they've never been in a studio before, they get a pretty good off the floor yeah. recording, yeah. and uh, that's how we're going to kick off uh, Rock Our Town, the relaunch of Rock Our Town. Even though it's up and running already, yeah, we're st it's streaming. It's a launch party, and uh, and I do have a link there that you can upload your music too. So cool. you you should get a couple songs up there because I don't think you got any songs no, I don't. going up there. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be done soon. I'm recording with Joe Lipinski right now. Yeah. I'm in the shed? Yeah, uh, at, uh, at uh, Oddfellows. Oh, yeah? He said the pop-up again? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he rented it at the month of August. Oh, yeah? So we went in there. We did some drums and guitar. We tracked those. Uh, it sounds great. Uh, well, everybody I, this recorded with him, well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but he's he's mastered. Well, that's And that's the thing. We were talking about like the Niagara community. It's an enigma. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like Toronto where it's like very partitioned or it's not like ha a Hamilton where, you know, you have your diehard metal scene. You have die like it's... It's very community oriented in, in Niagara, you know, where one person records with Joe, everybody's recording with Joe now. Do you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just, it's very uh, uh, family, very family. It's, it's the only, it's the only way that I can use to describe it. So, anyways, uh, the recording with Joe is great. Uh, also, I moved into the lighthouse uh, recently. 
right, uh, I forgot that. You forgot to, yeah, you forgot that I moved into the White House. So uh, that basement is up and operational. Two drum sets, full guitars, full gear, recording studio. Really? Drum mics, everything. You can go oh. by the floor. We got cameras, everything. It's set to go. It's just, you know, we've all been so busy. Scott, my roommate's in treetops. Uh, and uh, I'm doing livestock, and Mike's got his thing going on. So we haven't been able to utilize any of it just yet. It's just sitting oh. there. But we've talked to the G from Road Rage, and we're dabbling with the idea of putting on a house show at the, you know, uh, bringing back the, the venue concept at the White House. And then, I don't know, mm. maybe maybe Mondays could come back. I have no idea. That's a whole conversation for another time. But Yeah, Mondays was an amazing thing, and that's, you know, a I credit, well, my connection to a lot of these bands just came from doing the show mm -hmm. uh, at 610. And then, I don't know, I just kind of like, well, it would be cool to, you know who, Paige Cop was the first one that played my show, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That must have been cool. And, and that was before <laughs> I had, like, she played in the stu, like, where you did do the mm -hmm. talk show in that studio. And then I moved them into the, pr the produce, into the, the engineer's studio. Yeah. And he'd flip the mics around, so he couldn't actually talk to me, but... And we had, oh my God, we had some really great bands there. And, and Lisa and Clark Bitter were the connection there because a lot of these guys played their couch. Botting came in. Yep. Um, Jay Foreign from the Black, I knew Black Flies already, but when they, Jay. Oh, the Black Flies, that was a good band. They're getting back together, eh? I'm starting that rumor. Yeah, I started that rumor. I don't know if it's if taken started, off yet. <laughs> they were unbelievable. Nathaniel but anyways, they, the black flies. Yeah, they. Uh, Jay came in and he gave me Aaron Burger's CD and he said to me, "Aaron wants you to have this." I'm like, "Who's Aaron?" <laughs> like, I didn't know him because I was looking at his name and I knew I didn't know him. Anyway, I, you know, it took a while to make it to my deck. Yeah. But once it was in my deck in in the car. It didn't come out. Like, it didn't yeah, come yeah. out for months. Yeah. And then, you know, track three was St. Catharines. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, I've talked about this many times. The, 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 the love affair of an album, how it goes, like, you, you, you got your favorite tune. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the hit, you know, yeah. the single off the album. Yeah. So that's the one. You skip to that one first. Even when you, when you had vinyl, you're always putting that one on first. You know, the vinyl is more, maybe more, is easier probably to play start to finish, but... Uh, uh, so yeah, my connections started there, and then I had so many of them come in, and then you find and you look, at, you, you expect the local music to sound local. Yeah, it's like, like a when rock band or something like exactly. That. Yeah, it's yeah. like when they make the movies. I was always surprised it didn't look like the Beachcombers, right? And that it wasn't badly acted. And the fact that it's actually, <laughs> you know, it looks like Hollywood. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's they put on. You know what? It's because it's from the heart, and all their music is from the heart. It was never produced. No, but the sound quality too. Oh, well, the quality as well. Like if it sounds like it was recorded in a tin can, I don't care how much heart you got, it sucks. Right, right. And I am the first guy to say it sucks. But Who color and light, Who as did in they a, record with, I don't remember. P uh, color, uh, Aaron. Did Aaron Berger record the, the album? Oh no, no, no! It was um, Peter Haverkamp. Okay. I can't I can't remember exactly I think so but color and light is it's beautiful like start to finish it's not even it's well written it's well performed but it's mm -hmm. well recorded yeah and that's you know something oh, yeah. that surprised me yeah. about a lot of these Niagara bands roadways just put out their latest CD yeah. and even their first CD sounded really solid and you don't really expect it to you expect it to sound like it was recorded in someone's basement <laughs> Times have changed man the times have changed drastically you don't need a ten thousand dollar budget to make a good album anymore you got it you got a grand you can probably record a great album. You got a couple hundred bucks. You could probably do it yourself in, in your basement if you got the time to learn. It's hmm. not as I'm, I'm not taking away from the skill set by any means. It takes a lot yep. of work no, and a lot of knowledge to understand how to put it together. And that's why people pay for when I'm saying it doesn't cost. You don't need a ten grand is because a lot of the tools are have become a lot more accessible uh, to people uh, nowadays. So you know you you don't need. Uh, a huge uh, analog amplifier when uh, when you can have mm. your digital uh, interface on your you know uh, Mac computer or something like that and run your Garage Band. So uh, we're we're in the day of, uh, day and age of uh, good record good recording equipment, and you're gonna continue to hear a lot of good music. I mean, listen, uh, even the Band on the Couch uh, series, all those musicians were all playing live on the couch and. I could literally just listen to the audio from all those recordings 
and be totally content with that music because mm-hmm. the quality was that great. And all it was was a couple of condensed remarks, but Jordan just really knew how to mix it all together and to and to put it together nicely. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, that's why I'm thankful for the opportunity to record with Joe uh, Lipinski from. Uh, no worries. Uh, Everything's taken care of. You just show up and play, right? Yeah, you know, he, he was great to work with. That that experience was fantastic and very patient. Uh, I kept flubbing, you know, notes on the guitar and getting frustrated with myself. Dude, uh, you've can't. come such a long way. Like I didn't, I saw you on drums there a couple months ago. Oh yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, like I, yeah, last good. time I saw you play <laughs> drums, I don't know. It looked like you were just getting in, just starting. Yeah, I'm really good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to tell you. I got pretty good. I, I, I've been jamming must, a lot. You've been working hard at it then, perhaps. Yeah, I, I, just jamming a lot. I've been jamming with a lot of people. You know, playing with Old Child helped a lot too because, you know, it's uh, just playing with people that are a lot better than you kind of forces you to get better yourself. Uh, and they were way better than me. <laughs> cause those Same with Phil. Good. When he used to jam Monday nights, Yeah, like he used to just play the rhythm and strum along. The kid can wail. Like I didn't know. Phil uh, uh, Davis. Oh yeah, Phil can. I didn't know because every Monday night when I was there, of course, I was in the kitchen mostly. Right, you know, right, I was taking right, care right, of the right. everyone's bellies yeah, so because I don't I don't play much. You know, I know yeah, yeah. I know three chords. Yeah. But getting around those three chords for me still is I haven't got over that hump yet. You know what I mean? But dude, he can wail. I'm wail. so cranked. They're playing. They're they've committed to the 25th show, and I'm. Good. So happy to have them in studio, no, hoping no. that they'll put something down that we can listen to again and again and again. I can you know? honestly say Phil is the reason why I started getting back into guitar as heavily as I he's did. He's a great teacher uh, too, man. He's he's uh, and I I, keep, I can't stress patience enough because I think yeah. people that have patience, it, I I'm uh, I get frustrated and flustered with my own uh, work a lot. You know, I'm you know I beat myself up. You know, you're not good enough at this guitar part or whatever. Yeah. And uh, Phil's just got a very calming way of saying, hey, brother, let's just do it again. <laughs> you know, so we'll just do it again. And we'll, we'll rip through songs. And uh, and that, that, that ebb and flow of jamming with people that are like-minded kind of translated into a lot of other parts of my life. And, and then now my own music that I'm recording with Joe, kind of you get that flavor from that old child feel, that Phil did. You can feel like that really waves in influence like that. You can tell that, you know, wow, this guy's been hanging out with these people for a while because it's... Uh, you know, you are who your friends are, and you know, it all it's all tied in together. So, but Monday jams, I, I really hope that comes back. Um, well, we kind of let it get away from us, I think, um, from the standpoint that it, it just stopped being about the music. And w- yeah, we could have, yeah, we could have said, hey, jam. listen, you know, this this is because it was really a tight group. It was, and and like I said, I was in the kitchen more than I was doing anything, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just goes to shit. And, you know, I, I, I always remember the time I came down. Well, and, you know, this is one thing I love is the gift of music. Like, Phil has been so generous. Like, I had a little jam here. He showed up. We did mm-hmm. a little interview. We talked Native issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a girlfriend of mine was here that, who I've, I never hung out with before. I, you know, I met her at an event. I'm like, oh, yeah, you play? You should. We're doing this. She's like, no way. Oh, I'd love that. She stood this far sat this far away from Phil and he was on the guitar he was mm-hmm. and she's like this is awesome oh, yeah. well they're like really good friends she comes out to the Tuesday night she's been coming out to the Tuesday night here and there nice and uh, like they're it's so cool well Scotty was the same thing well Scotty used to play at home all the time he'd never he never jammed anywhere al- before yeah. so I you know I'm starting I'm big, starting Big Scott you're talking about Big, big Scott yeah, yeah, yeah hottie yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, Scotty too hottie yeah, yeah. So I uh, like I was I was picking up Aaron and bringing him out all the yeah, time Monday yeah, nights yeah, and I yeah. and again I you know one night we did tacos one night we did burgers one night you know because yeah. I, I really just get off on making sure everyone's fed right you feel and like that, that's what the lighthouse is about bringing up people who don't normally get like you know who kind of need to be broken out of their shell I think so because so I get behind the keyboard mm-hmm. and James is there and he's yeah. noodling around on his guitar yeah. and I start. I don't know. It just kind of like just whatever I was hitting sound sounded yeah. good, and yeah. I had the rhythm, and you know I I I got a good ear. I just don't you know I don't play anything, so whatever I was doing kept sounding good, and and That's James good. kept noodling around, and I kept jerking around, and then, yeah. and Scotty was at the, standing at the bottom of the stairs, kind of just watching it, and then I look at Scotty, and I'm like, 
well, you're the keyboard player. Mm -hmm. And so I start to get up. And James says, sit down, finish the song. Like he, <laughs> he grossed me out. Yeah. So I was like, whoa, easy, James. So I get back down. I kind of finish the song and stuff like this. He goes, you can't leave in the middle of the song. So then after that, Scotty was really weirded out about getting behind the keyboard because he's never played that, in yeah. front of anyone before. I'm like, dude, so I, you, I don't even play. He plays all the time at the open mic night now. Yeah. Like every Tuesday. I James. know. Right? In so, front of people on a stage. I know. And that never would have happened never. without me. I can take credit for that. Yeah, but that is the greatest <laughs> feeling yeah. is introducing someone. You know, you, you know, you probably got those friends that are like, well, what do you mean you hung out without me? They get all jealous yeah, when you introduce yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. and then they go behind your back and have a friendship and stuff. Yeah. I couldn't be more pleased. And that's it. Philip uh, was the was so generous like that. And, you know, now, you know, from that one meeting, she's gone into this whole like the, this is a whole, she's met a whole network of people that are musical yeah. right through the jam and through Phil and yeah, through yeah. his generosity and teaching and. You know, she was telling me the other day, like, no, oh, yeah, I'm, I got to go see. I'm going over to Phil's tonight. You know, I'm like, cool, man. <laughs> it's awesome. So the gift of music is, you know, it's it's way better than laying a CD. That's even great. When you lay a CD on somebody and they can't stop playing it and they're like, hey, thanks for introducing me. I remember. Uh, it's about the, the live music experience. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if Mondays are going, going to come back the way that they used to. I have no idea. All we can do is put it out there and. Uh, jam yeah and see what happens i mean if people show up and they want to jam it'll be there yeah I, I can say with a surety that the monday night jams are going to return from just on what capacity to, on what capacity that's up to the people that's up to the people who want to jam and there you that's go. all i can say you know all right well we said goodbye a half an hour ago and then we kept talking so there we go we're still ahead of almost an hour anyway so yeah. again thanks a lot brother for no coming problem, in man. and good Thank luck you. with uh Thanks, guys. Yeah, we had a few people joining in. Just say to you, Rafiq. Let's uh, say goodbye, Rafiq. <laughs> okay.